What up, watch peeps? I know a lot of my viewers are already hardcore Zelos fans, and I am too. I applaud Zelos for making modern styled watches when everyone else out there seems to be chasing faux vintage looks. If you've not owned a Zelos before, the build quality is outstanding. So I've got a full review of that Zelos Horizons 3-hander that I unboxed a couple weeks back, so let's take a look. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. First up, wrist check. Wearing my new Mark 52 again. This is that Seiko, I guess it's a Mecha Quartz, but not a chronograph. It is that four beats per second quartz. I found this uh, end links that happened to fit it, so I just slapped it on this bracelet, and I think it is really cool like that. Well, let's take a look at this Zelos. As you guys know, all Zelos come in these awesome boxes. I forget what kind of wood this is. Someone said, but it, it's, they're really nice. Definitely something you can do something. I keep straps in these. And you also get a pretty killer watch roll. So these are very nice with the buckle. Like a soft material on the inside. You always get the Zelos, it looks like bronze. Warranty card, dated, very cool. Numbered. Hey, 007, what do you know? I always think it's funny that like people think that's a desirable serial number on like a numbered watch, right? It's kind of funny. But here is the Zelos Horizons three-hander. And this is just the dive time bezel variant in the dusk colorway. And I think this was my favorite colorway of all of them. The all white with the orange second has a little bit of Explorer vibes to it. That's a 12 hour. That was probably my favorite of the 12 hours. There's a couple blue dial variants that are really pretty as well. Now these run Miyota movements, the Miyota 9015. So the first thing you notice on these uh, is obviously the dial. They have this really cool, I don't even know if you would call this a sunburst because that's almost like a textured dial. Um, like a deep grain that emulates a sunburst pattern. And this particular model has also that gradient fading from like what I would call, I think they label it as gray, but to me it's almost tan, tannish gray, fading into just black at the edges. But with the orange, that would, if that's a tan, it works really well with the orange on the second hand, the text on the dial, in the bezel insert. It's just a really nice color palette, I guess you would call that group of colors. Now the case on these, these are small guys. They list them as 39, but when I measure them, I don't get quite that. So it's it wears really well. I don't think it wears too small. And I'm used to wearing 42, 41 millimeter divers all the time. And I think this wears just fine. Is it a compact small diver? Yeah, but I mean, look how thin it is. I think they listed at 10 and a half millimeters thick, which is just going to wear great regardless of the diameter. Really nice case shape. Just that instead of turn down lugs, you almost have that curvature that goes through the case and you can see it is brushed on the sides with really nice polished chamfers on both the top and the bottom and that is something Seiko does right these cutaways on the underside of a case and I think that makes for wear comfort you can see it has like a they call it a box crystal but it's we'll zoom in again here you can see it's not it doesn't sit super proud of the bezel like what i would consider a box but i guess it is above it so but it is clearly double domed you can see there's no distortion there at deep angles it's a great time to take a look at those indices on the dial too they are applied and they are really nice i really like the triangle kind of stick combo for indices it's nothing too crazy and that's a good choice because this watch has a lot going on with the textured dial 
And I think playing it safe with the end of season hands is, is a great design choice. These dive bezel variants have a 120 click bezel and the action is as precise as all Zealous watches are. Great sound, great feedback. One more, one more. And no play ever, What? No, in any direction. They're the most solid bezels in the game. Taking a look at the crown, you'll see it has nice deep grooves in it, very pretty signed crown they do a really good job with those it's about six and a half millimeters not quite seven seven might have looked a little too big on this size watch but the grip on it is fantastic there's no crown guard so it's easy to get to easy to manipulate and again you know not putting a crown that's maybe too big for this case size another great design choice the top of the lugs are brushed and then you get that polished chamfer like we talked about earlier then brushed on the side and then polished underneath great transitions as always and the bracelet is fantastic on these it does have male end links so that will add to the lug to lug the the true lug to lug i guess but it's a small watch i don't think that's going to be a problem for any wrist size and the bracelet is fantastic it's pretty much just a brushed out oyster but if you look at the edges right Great chamfers on the edges, very smooth. And the clasp, I think, is a uh, one of the best I've owned yet. Simple two button, but on a you know on a still somewhat robust without being oversized clasp. And, and they're just blasted finish with the polish, or I guess it's not polished; it's brushed and blasted with their logo and that stripe. It just it reminds me of a surfboard. I just think it evokes that kind of look. Just certain level of coolness but inside you get the full milled out clasp and most importantly you get what they've done with christopher ward here um, looks just like they're on the fly toolless micro adjust so this is the button if you can see what i'm doing there this thing slides and that releases and then you can come back in so i think i only got one more one more so I think ideally, you know, you'd want to, I think there's five positions total. And I think ideally you want to be somewhere in like the, the middle position, see if you can get a fit and then hopefully go in one or out and still give yourself a little bit of play on either side. But this is a real nice option as far as on the fly adjustment goes. There's no second set of buttons. It doesn't look weird when it's extended. It still just looks like a normal bracelet, whether it's extended or completely retracted. You don't get that weird slider part. So I, I'm a big fan of this new clasp. I think that's where I wear it. Yeah, I think that came out really good. If I didn't mention, there are 20 millimeter lugs and the bracelet has two millimeters of taper down to 18 at the clasp. Taking a look at the case back, which is really cool. You get kind of this global map and like this real deep relief, but Nothing sharp that I can feel that is uncomfortable on the wrist. Nothing I noticed while wearing. A little bit of spec sheet and let's see if I can show you that. You can see it actually is numbered. Sapphire crystal and you'll see 007 out of 100. The other side, Zealous Horizons, 200 meters water resistance, 316 out stainless steel. But really cool case back all in all. Let's see how it is running on the time grapher. So you see this particular example is running at an average of plus eight seconds per day. Not terrible at all. Really strong amplitude of 292. That's basically how much power it's transferring from the mainspring to the gear train. Uh, 0.3 beat error, nothing to really worry about there. All in all, good runner. Taking a look at the specs, I measured the case at 38.3 millimeters with a 44 millimeter lug to lug. They have 20 millimeter lug width and 12.4 millimeters thick with the crystal included. And on bracelet size for my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it came in at 144 grams. 
Now it features 200 meters of water resistance, a domed box sapphire crystal, combination of X1 and BGW9 loom, and also has a loomed sapphire bezel insert and running on a Miyota 9015 movement. Here's how it looks side by side with the Notice Sector. Now this is the field case, but I think their dive is the, it uses the same case. It's a 38 millimeter case. So pretty similarly sized watches. The Sector with the larger dial is appearing slightly larger in this case. And with the, alongside the 40 millimeter Woolbrook, this is a basic standard 40, 40 millimeter diver. You can see how it wears slightly smaller than that, but because it has some visual impact, I don't think it will quite wear as small as 38.3. And lastly, alongside the Seiko SKX at a little over 42 millimeters, good frame of reference. You can see it is, I wouldn't say dwarfed, but definitely smaller than the SKX. Lastly, let's take a look at that loom that we've been talking about. Keep the loom. Here you can see it is a really nice loom set. You'll see that X1 on the dial and handset, very bright. It looks like the BGW9 is in the bezel insert, and it's really not bad there either, but the X1 is just so bright, I think it's drowning out that X1 a little bit, or the drowning out the BGW9 a little bit. But as always, great loom from Zelos. So there it is, the Zelos Horizons 3-hander in the dust colorway. I'm not sure there's a more appropriate color palette for the fall season, but this one I think is restrained enough that it'll be classy all year round. Now, as always with Zelos, you get some kind of pop that's gonna draw your attention. In this case, the dial, but yeah, great watch, super comfortable to wear. All right, before I let you go, sneaker check. Just wearing some old air flights that I almost forgot I had. I used to actually play basketball in these. All right, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.